Subscribe to Original Big Bri and follow Hitchtastic Tuesday. You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some fry balls. Hello Diecast Collectors and Diecast Reviewers on YouTube. Welcome back to another new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News Show. Hosted by me, Original Big Fry, as always. Y'all, so, um, yeah, we are about to uh, commence uh, another new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News. Where, of course, I'll be giving you guys my little weekly reviews of all the NASCAR Diecast News that has happened up until this point for a good week or so now. And also include your uh, newly released diecast, uh, some newest pre-orders, and oh, of course, new cancellations. Well, we've got some other subtopics as well, guys. Uh, we do got um, uh, some special previews of uh, some upcoming diecasts that should be hitting our dealers and uh, retailers very, very shortly. So we got a nice little preview of that. And uh, like I said, we got a, a good amount of pre-orders and uh, brand new 2015 diecast to come in stock that are now here. And I'll be giving my little review on them. But, uh, yep, this new episode is about to commence in any moment now. But before we do that, guys, let's take a look at your best selling diecasts that were from last week's episode. Alright everybody, the NASCAR Diecast News has begun and let's start off with your newly released Diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales or Casey Diecast. Like always guys, I will only be reviewing the cars that are um, pretty different from this year, unlike last year, you know, so any uh, Diecasts that look fairly similar um, to like any of the previous years won't be uh, giving a review of that with them at all, just the same time and you know, just, um, you know, it's not really a new diecast, it's just, you know, reproduced and just slapped the 2015, uh, you know, logos and decals on it. So that is going to be excluding the uh, Sam Hornish Jr. Twisted T car, despite that car being on EL Mold, could be a better buy, and the uh, Brad Kozlowski discount tire for Mustang. Do I have to say anything? A cup guy in the Xfinity car. Yep. All right, so let's start off with uh, now your newly your uh, new diecast, your 2015 diecast, the proper ones, and it's off with. And let's start off with uh, the number one one main financial Ford Mustang, Elliot Sandler. Elliot Sandler is uh, kind of heading the same path as Carl Edwards is. A uh, whole new team, uh, and a whole a new number and a whole new team. So I mean, how about that? He is in the number one. One main financial car. However, he has not got to P1 yet. But however, this is a very uh, nice car. And uh, if you guys have noticed, they did change the Ford Mustang uh, look a little bit. So uh, I believe the mold is kind of the same, but uh, they did uh, change the decals on it a little bit. So um, yeah, this is um, bad because uh, you know the Mustangs they did change for this year. That's what they do. They do look pretty nice, I have to admit. And this one definitely is probably going to be um, definitely one to get. Especially since it's the first Roush car to be produced for um, the Xfinity series, as uh, still waiting on Bob Wallace's and still waiting for a Chris Buescher diecast to be produced in 164. But uh, definitely would recommend this, especially with his uh, that new number one font, which looks uh, pretty dang cool if you ask me. Uh, hell, so um, that's all I must to say about that. Um, and hoping Sandler has the best of luck, and hopefully he could put off some uh, great finishes um, uh, since he hasn't really had that much of a luck this season so see what can we do and maybe he could get into P1 for uh, next time. So next one uh, a lot of people thought that this car would get cancelled because you know every Ring and Smith card that we have seen so far has been cancelled 
up to this point. And luckily for sure, we do have a second Riga Smith bar in stock that did got produced. I was really surprised to see this Anderson's maple syrup car to be uh, produced with all these other cars to be, you know, canceled as swap. I mean, I mean, a lot, a lot of uh, very uh, major sponsors. Uh, I mean, let's just say a good majority of Regan Smith cars have been canceled. I think only this and the Tax Slayer car so far have been made. Still no word yet on the Dale's Pales Ale car, the uh, that car that he uh, ran at Charlotte. So, um, there's no word yet if that made MLQ yet, but other than that, not much Regan Smith diecast. But uh, I think this is a pretty interesting scheme. I mean, uh, not too many people do not like the uh, um, the salutes banner on top because it does really go well with the paint scheme. But this is indeed a salutes card, even on the tires. Uh, the, the tires are actually pretty high quality because of, um, uh, they have special tires on the uh, salute cars and. Um, Luckily, Lionel was able to put that much detail and quality on just, uh, you know, not just the NASCAR banner on the windshield, but also on the tires as well. So, a uh, good job for Lionel. And uh, also, this was the Elmo, so I think it should be a good buy. And, uh, yeah, I think this is a, a pretty, uh, what do I say, this uh, sweet car. Oh, God, those are my stupid puns again. But I definitely uh, would get this car because I pretty much uh, stuck out of luck <laughs> with the Regan Smith cars of this year. All right, next one, guys. Well, we did know um, that the Toyotas have been out for, you know, a good uh, month or a good month and a half now. A lot of people are wondering, hey, when is this going to be officially released to the public? Well, luckily, they just came in right in time and right on schedule. Toyotas were supposed, to, were supposed to be publicly released in June, July. What do you know? They are finally here. Both Carl Lervis's Eris car and the Stanley car are both released. And might I say that Eris car, I mean, yes, it's good. it's similar to Schwarz's car. But for me, being a Carl Lervis fan, that's just one hell of an awesome car. And... Lionel did something right with that Toyota World. If you guys haven't saw my review on the uh, Carl Leverett Stanley car, you'll probably get a good little intake of what I thought of Lionel in this mold. But that's one thing that Lionel really did right. Uh, uh, the, the, this Toyota mold was very detailed. And I think you gotta give props to Lionel for, you know, trying the hardest to get this car out actually on time for once. So very interesting. Overall, I do love both these cars. I love this car. Probably do like the Stanley one just a little bit more because the paint scheme just really fits right with the sponsor and all that. So, as me being a car loves fan, I would definitely recommend getting both of these cars. Probably 124 as well. So, very interesting. Uh, and uh, next two are also uh, Toyota cars. Uh, Matt Kenza's Dollar General Toyota, which does look a little more bland or like. Uh, Unlike last year, there's a lot more yellow on this car, and it does. It's a nice little change. Some people might not like the blandness, but you know, I mean, it's a good thing that I'm um, to change the schemes up a little bit. No, it's not much, but heck, it does look good on the new Toyota mold. So, but uh, despite that, I probably would recommend getting his DeWalt car because you guys know Matt Kenseth and DeWalt have really had some good uh, relations, especially when they went to Roush Finner Racing until they parted ways. Uh, you know. Um, at the end of his career with Roush Fenway Racing. But uh, they're back and they're better than ever and hopefully we see this car in victory lane as hell. That'd be probably one hell of an emotional win for Matt Kenseth and the Stowall car. But this is probably one of the probably most anticipated and if not, probably could be one of the best diecast to get for this year. Because it's just, this car has so much history, so much meat to it and the paint game is awesome as always. So this Stowall car, a must to get for 2015 guys. All right, and the last one I'm going to say is the Ty Dillon Yingling Light car, the Yingling Light um, American Salute car that he drove at Pocono for this year. I take a little drink right there. But yeah, I mean, uh, pretty cool to see a Ty Dillon car uh, finally get made because uh, his Cheerios car didn't, uh, you know, made MLQ. Uh, his uh, Cheerios car that, you know, did not... Um, <clears throat> that did not got uh, made that he ran at the, at the uh, Daytona race. But um, and this scheme is very similar 
like his um like his um what his American Yang League light car from last year. Paint scheme is exactly the same, but they just slapped a 33 in the and you know it's on a cut body, but still a pretty nice car, especially if you're a big Ty Dillon and Austin Dillon fan. Probably will be getting this because you know the Ty Dillon and diecast have been can't uh, most most majority of them have been canceled. I mean uh, the SpongeBob SquarePants car is like the last car. Uh, it just made MOQ, so should get that car be made. But for now, I mean hell. This is a good buy. A lot of people thought this car was going to be canceled. Uh, pretty cool to see that uh, this car made it just in time and, you know, <laughs> definitely answer a lot of people's questions. So, very nice car. I like the, Ameri the Americana on this car and probably would get it. Hell, <laughs> excuse me. All right. Now, um, I got some good news right here and some bad news. Well, actually, no, there's not really any bad news. Some really good news. No cancellations for this uh, episode, guys. So that is a very cool thing. Uh, however, though, I am going to be reviewing the pre-orders just a little bit. Usually, I don't review pre-orders because, you know, not really much to talk about. But there are two that are very significant that I should be, you know, getting a little more detail on. Um, first one I'm going to be doing is Chase Elliott's uh, Napa Retro Scar that he will be driving at the Darlington race. The upcoming Darlington, uh, Darlington race for this year and um yeah so napa and chase Elliott decided to put a little um detail into this paint scheme and if you look pretty closely it does look similar i'll give you guys a couple seconds can't catch it yet well get this um this paint scheme is actually very similar to what uh you know chase elliott's dad uh bill elliott drove in his number nine of course car um that he uh drove you know, way, way back ago before, you know, a good majority of us were born, you know. Um, so, I thought that was a really cool, I mean, I'm really digging all these retro uh, rollback schemes, so I think this Dominator race is going to be, you know, fairly interesting. I mean, the, the Dominator race, it is, you know, one of NASCAR's, you know, top events, you know. It's up there with the dates on the 500 and the 600 and the, the Brickyard, so, um... Definitely is living up to his expectations, man. You know, I'm really digging all these retro cars. This Chase Elliott one, I mean, uh, didn't know he was gonna run the Dolly Tennis, but he did won that race last year at the uh, in the uh, Nationwide Series before it was called the Xfinity Series. But uh, what I gotta think about this, um, you know, it's a I, I like the significance of the car and uh, the scheme and how it uh, tributes to uh, Bill Elliott. However, though, I, I'm not really digging how auto parts are just, I don't know, I mean, course is a short word, it, it looks good when slanted, but auto parts, I think it's just too long of a word, and just, just looks awkward when it's in that angle when slanted. I think that's the only thing that bugs me, I think it's just an OCD problem. But other than that, pretty interesting car, you know, I really like the Napa Retro look, and hoping to see that car on the track very soon, and I know a good amount of you guys are going to get that thing pre-ordered, so pre-order, pre-order, pre-order! <laughs> And uh, let's see, the other pre-order I'm going to be, uh, God, I feel like Steve Post, you got to pre-order all these diecasts, you all <laughs> well, I don't think he has a country accent, but, um, yeah, but, um, God, I'm getting totally off guard. <laughs> this happens to have a little too much fun on the diecast news. But, um, yeah, the next uh, pre-order, or, or, of course, the last one we're going to be talking about is the Kurt Busch Haas retro car. So, yeah, another retro car, of course, that he'll be driving at the Darlington race. And this one has another good significance. As you guys know, it has been uh, recently, it has been two years since we watched Jason Leffler. And if you look really closely in this paint scheme, Jason Leffler actually drove this car, or, you know, the scheme, not this car, but you know, the, the scheme-wise. Um, and uh, what was formerly known as the Bush series back in the early 2000s, uh, way early 2000s. So, uh, but but um, that's why a lot of fans see it. But actually, uh, Haas Racing, you know, Stuart Haas Racing, they, this car is actually commending uh, commending their um, first ever Haas car, which was uh, you know uh, the double zero car, I believe. That was back in the Cup Series, but uh, Jason Leffler did drove a Haas car, and it does look fairly similar in this picture I show you right here. So uh, probably we're recommending in this car, of course, if you guys were a big fan or still are a big Jason Leffler fan, probably we'll get this in honor of him. And, um, you know, I think this would be uh, one hell of a cool diecast to get. 
I'm a big fan of Kurt Busch, so I probably will get this car on 164, maybe 124 as well, but uh, I'm really liking how all these uh, these paint schemes that we're seeing in the dog series have a big meaning to them. You know, I really like Chase Elliott's and Kurt Busch's cars. Um, I'm hoping we can see more. I'm hoping to see what Eric Amarola's car is going to be and Danica's car. I mean, hell. So uh, I'm really curious. I'm looking forward to uh, that uh, Darlington race coming up uh, for this year. But anyways, guys, yep, we will return. So we're going to take a little short break, and I mean a little, all right? So it'll be like just a teeny tiny short break. And when we get back, we're going to go on to our last topic of this episode, and it is going to be a nice special preview of some upcoming diecasts that have hit um, the haulers or the merchandise tents, but uh, they will be hitting in our diecast dealers and shops very soon. So we're going to get a little preview of that right after this short, and I mean pretty short commercial. Don't you hate the fact that you, you try to find so much food and the perfect snack, but yet it's just so far out of reach, literally for this man. Well, lucky for you guys, there is Twix candy bars. Twix, the official candy of the IRA and the only candy out there in the world with the cookie crunch. Twix, enjoy these Twix cereal bars at your fine retailers. Well, what are you waiting for? Get yourself a Twix bar and cure your hunger today. And I ain't just no spokesperson. I am just an average, ordinary YouTuber ready to prepare you guys for a great diecast debut. Mmm, sweet cookie crumbs. Oh shit. George? Don't oh, worry. It's only Fifth Avenue bar. Well, hello everybody. We're back here on the NASCAR Diecast News, and my oh my, you guys are some quite lovely people. Anyways, uh, sorry for that being a little creepy right there, but yes guys, let's get on with the preview, the special nice little preview that we got. We do got um, two special previews to show you guys for um, some upcoming diecasts that, uh, that, uh, that have surprisingly hit at some uh, very interesting places but they should be heading on our way at the uh, public places, you know, the diecast dealers and the diecast shops, you know, basically, basically where you, wherever you get your diecast at, they should be hitting those very, very shortly. I don't know when, I don't know where, but very shortly, that's all I can say. But let's start off with the Danny Hamlin cars. And I know a good majority of people on Instagram have got a hold of these, um, you know, because they were at the track store, they just know, you know, they are a big JGR fan, like Race Day 2011, and they contacted them on the JGR um, Racing Online Shop, and they were able to, you know, get a hold of these, because, you know, I mean, looks like the Joe Gibbs Racing Shop has really um, um, got acquired of these uh, new Toyota molds very quickly. I mean, uh, they had early access with the Carl Leopard's cars and Matt Kenseth's cars, and now all Denny Hamlin's cars. If I had to say my favorite car, for this Danny Hamlin, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I'm so glad they changed the Danny Hamlin cars of this year, because if we've had, if we had to go another year with just that same FedEx team that he's been riding since 2011, I would have lost my mind, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> this is why I don't like FedEx, unoriginal, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm totally getting off guard, my favorite uh, FedEx car for this year, I, I probably, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm really digging um, that 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 um, that that, that green that the ground car he's got. It just really stands out. But I don't know. I mean, I still like his classic orange car. You know, I'm not just saying that because Carl Lewis drives an orange car. Um, you know, it's just so so iconic seeing you know just orange on a FedEx car, and it just really blends well with the purple and the black and all that. But uh, I don't know. I, I do like his express car probably the best. Probably his ground car is probably up there too. I say the FedEx Fright car is probably my least favorite, but um, I, I think I, you guys should uh, get these you know, when they come out because uh, it's about the time they finally change these uh, Hamlin cars. So uh, good job, and also uh, they're on the new Toyota molds. So hell, gotta get them once we uh, once they finally come out. And the last one, guys. This one just got recently, you know, trended. It was recently, you know, just 
found on Instagram. Um, some, I think like only one or two people probably might have had this car already now. The Kyle Busch M&M's Crispy car. I believe it is at the Joe Gibbs Racing Shop as well, but I don't know. It's pretty secure right now. If you guys can find a way to get this car, you know, um, unsecuredly, uh, let me know. I mean, hell, because uh, this is a very nice car. I do like the uh, green M&M's Crispy look that they decided to change up for this year. You know, it's not the traditional M&M colors that we're used to with all the yellow and the chocolate. Did I just say yellow? Oh, God. <laughs> this happens when you do a late night. I die cast name is 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I need to go to bed soon. But, um, yes, this, uh, I almost said yellow crispy and that's not. You're losing it today, Brian, are you? <laughs> it's a, a green crispy M&M's car. Um, you know, I love this new look, and hey, crispy and rims are back, and I had them before, and they are fucking delicious, all right? Not promoting advertising, but uh, if you guys find crispy and rims, I highly suggest trying them. They are pretty good. It's like M&M's meets Kit Kat. It's a pretty good combination, and I love me some Kit Kats. Oh, God, now I'm talking about candy. Okay, I'm losing it. I am losing it right now. But anyways, yeah, the candy man so accomplished. After everything that's happened this year, I probably would recommend getting this car and uh, definitely and also really got to thank all the uh, people on Instagram for uh, with these pictures of uh, Snickers Pro Series for uh, the Kyle Busch Snickers. I mean, uh, the Snick. Oh, my God. M&M's Crispy Car. And also got to thank at BT Baller 19 for the Hamlin uh, die cast and also that Hamlin Hero Card. It's the only Hamlin Hero Card I do not have. Actually, no, that's the only JGR hero card I do not have for this year. So, good thing for teasing me that I'll have to find that very soon since I am a hero card tour. But other than that, guys, this has been NASCAR Diecast News. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys had a good Father's Day. I wish a uh, nice Father's Day. I mean, it's, I know it's very late. Probably going to have this uploaded on Monday or Tuesday. But I uh, wish a nice, good, happy, father, late, happy Father's Day to, you know, all the dads and fathers out there. You know, all the fatherly figures, you know, for just, you know bringing us to what we are today, you know. So, yeah, that is about it with the NASCAR IKS News. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, guys, please give this uh, video series a good comment, like, and if you guys have not already, subscribe for more on the NASCAR IKS News or anything NASCAR IKS out there. You may know, what are you gonna miss? And also, gotta thank you guys for a thousand followers. We've just reached a thousand followers on Instagram, so, you know, Probably I'm gonna do something a little special with that very shortly. Uh, just gotta get my schedule has been a little changed now since I started since I started working now. But yep, guys. Um, so I guess we'll uh, I will see you guys next time on the NASCAR Diecast News for any more of your latest NASCAR Diecast News to come. So for now, so long. Next time.